The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I hired a fundraising coach. I'm not an actual fundraiser. So I hired a fundraising coach. And uh, the guy lives in Ramat Bin Shemesh, very, very talented man. His name is Avram Lewis. It was recommended to me by a friend. And we had a weekly Skype session. And one night, he said to me, he said, Yo, I know you have a trip scheduled in New York. I live in L.A. <laughs> said, do you have any friends in New York who you can ask money from? You know, you have to fundraise for this project. He said, do you know anybody in New York? So I scratched my head, and I'm thinking to myself, do I know anybody in New York? And I remembered that I had a friend from high school that I learned with. And he made me very big. He's a very big real estate investor in New York. And I said to him, you know, this guy, Ari, who I can hit up and ask him for some money. So he said, well, why don't you text him? I said, I talked to him in 20 years. He said, text him like this. And he gives me the words. He says, text him and ask him. Say, hi, Ari, it's Yoel Gold. I hope you still remember me. I wanted to catch up. I'm wondering if we can meet next week, Thursday. I'll be in New York in the area. I wanted to ask you for some help on a certain project. So I don't mislead him, you know, making him believe that I just want to see him. I let him know I need his help. He texts me back and he says, of course, Yoel, let me know what time and I will be there. And where and I'll be there. So I, um, I call my brother, who's an entrepreneur, and he knows about meeting with people with money. And I said, Mayor, where can I take this guy out to a nice restaurant for lunch in Flatbush? So you guys all live in Toronto. So I don't know if you know this restaurant, but if you ever go to New York, you want to go for lunch. So this is a great restaurant. He told me it's Piscata. Piscata. So I text back my friend, oh, we're going to go to Piscata in Flatbush. So when I get there, and Thursday morning, we're supposed to meet at 12 o'clock, he texts me back. He says, yo, well, which Piscata do you want to meet in? There are two. So I didn't know there are two Piscatas. So I'm saying, what do you mean? He says, one is an Avenue P and one is an Avenue M. Which one do you want to go to? I said, on the moment, I said, eeny, meeny, miny, mo sounds like M sounds good. I said, Avenue M. He says, great, I'll be there. We're scheduled to meet at 12 o'clock. Now, with my fundraising coach, I had prepared a word-for-word -word pitch for this guy. So I had a script in my pocket. I had a script with three paragraphs, keywords, to say how to pitch the project to my friend and hoping to get from him a $100,000 check. I have never asked anyone for so much money, and I haven't seen him in 20 years. I'm very, very nervous. I'm rehearsing the script. I walk into the restaurant, Piscata and Avenue M. 11.58, two minutes before 12 o'clock. I order two glasses of wine. I order a salad for myself. A guy comes in. He's 12, 12 or 3. He comes in. He has a Bluetooth piece. Tall guy, handsome fellow. Very, very, you can tell he's very, very busy. He's making the time for me. He walks in and he walks up over to me. I get up. I give him a hug. We sit down and we start catching up on life. And we talk about anything and everything but money. I can't gather the courage to talk about money and to really get the script going. 25 minutes later, we're done with lunch. And at this point, I know he's got to go. And we have to put a dessert. So I get up and I walk into the bathroom. I excuse myself. And I take out my script one more time. And I look at the script. I rehearse it. And I have a confession to make. I doubt from the bathroom. <laughs> and I said, and I said, Hashem, you know, I just want to get this curriculum up and running to make it available to schools. So please, Hashem, help me, help me with this pitch. You know, and I'm reading the script and I paper back in my pocket, my hands are my palms sweating. And my heart, you know, is pumping and I'm sitting down and I start talking to him and I say, you know, Ari, you know, I don't know if you've seen the videos. I start to go a little bit of the videos, and all of, a sudden, all of a sudden, this is actually the point where I needed that. All of a sudden, <laughs> I, uh, my, my face, I'm facing the, the door of the restaurant. He's facing me, so here's the back. So it's exactly like this. You're facing me right now. He's facing the back. I'm facing the door. I can see that from the door, a middle-aged woman walks in. And she takes one look at me. Now, I know that look when somebody looks at me and it says, I recognize you. I know who you are. And I know usually what happens next is 80% of the time they come over and they give me some heartwarming compliments. And I'm thinking to myself, lady, don't come over right now. I'm making the pitch of my life. It's not a good time. <laughs> she comes over. <laughs> and she walks over to me and she says, Rabbi Gold. 
are you Rabbi Gold? I said, yeah, Rabbi Gold. She says, my goodness, Rabbi Gold, you're not going to believe this. And she's excited. But you're not going to believe this. Right next to this restaurant, Piscata, there is a Sephardic girls school called Share Torah. And the girls, 12 o'clock, usually come out of school and they walk into the restaurant to buy some sandwiches for lunch. The girls came in from Share Torah to the Piscata restaurant just now to buy sandwiches. And they saw you. And they got really, really excited. They came back to the school and said, Rabbi Gold is next door. He watches videos. They asked me to come over and talk to you to see if I can get you to come and speak to them next door after lunch. Now, Rabbi Gold, I got to tell you, your videos, your videos are life-changing. I have one recommendation, by the way. It would be amazing if you can make a curriculum around these videos for our girls. It's just incredible. And for 10 minutes, she goes on and makes my pitch. <laughs> Now, Ari is looking at me suspiciously. He <laughs> thinks I set this up. <laughs> she finishes speaking. She said, Rabbi Gold, would you come? By now, I'm feeling anything for you, lady. Thank you so much for your help. This is what I'm thinking. I'm not saying, I said, of course, I'll be there. <clears throat> she, she walks out, and then Ari looks at me, and Ari says, says, yo, how much do you need for this project? I said, I take a deep breath. I said, a hundred thousand dollars. And he said, uh, okay. And he gives me a hundred thousand dollar check. Now, you know, I, I'm a shock. As, as you, I can't believe what just happened. And he says, can I do anything else for you? I'm in a rush. I said, now, for now, okay. We'll be in touch. So he leaves the restaurant, and I'm sitting there paralyzed, and I'm trying to gather myself. And I remember that I have to go speak next door. So I, I pick myself up, and I remembered the script in my pocket. The script I was working so hard on, I remembered the script in my pocket. So I um, take out the script, and I look at it, and I tear it into pieces, and I throw it in the garbage. And I continue walking to the school. And this Mrs. Sprung, her name is Mrs. Sprung, by the way, this principal of the school, Shari Torah, introduces me to the girls, just, you know, just like, like right here. Introduces me, he says, Warash Gacha Pratit, the Rabbi Gold was next door, and he can come talk to us. And I get up and I say, girls, let me tell you about Ashgacha. She has no idea what, what she just did, what happened. <laughs> so let me tell you what just happened. And I remember that night, I was traveling back to LA and I was on the plane. I had tears in my eyes. I couldn't believe the siyatat ishmaya that I had. And I thought to myself, this morning, I made a blessing. And the blessing was, Baruch Atah Hashem, Elekeinu Melech Oilam, HaMechen Mitzadeh Gover. Hashem prepares the steps of men. And I said, I had no idea where I'm going to go. Am I going to go to Avenue P, Piscata? Or Avenue and Piscata. I didn't even know there were two Piscatas. And for some reason or another, I chose Avenue N, but I didn't choose it. Hashem chose it for me. Hashem prepares our steps. So there's one simple question. That Pasuk comes, that Bracha comes from a Pasuk initially. The Pasuk initially says, Hashem, Hashem prepares our steps. So Shlomo HaMelech says, Adama, so what should a person who imagine if Hashem prepares your steps, so why should I put in any effort? Anyways, God will guide me, so why should I do anything? No. Adama, you know what a person has to do? Yavin Darko. Two important words. A person has to have a script in their pocket. We always have to have a goal and have a plan and how we're going to reach those goals. That's our responsibility. Once we have a plan, a script, to accomplish and achieve a goal, then Mrs. Sprung steps into the picture. The Shliach Hashem steps into the picture. That's how life works. It was huge. For me, it was very big. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.